Alright, welcome back to another episode of the What If I'm What If I'm Wrong podcast. So I haven't done one of these scoot my chair, hold on. I haven't done one of these in a long time. I think I keep talking myself out of it. Maybe I just two, two and a half hours is like usually when I'm ready to segue to our sponsor. Uh, just kidding, I don't have a sponsor. Um, I just realized that audio is probably blown out. Oh, well, here we go. This is the what if the segment of the show called the what if I'm wrong podcast. So first of all, thank you to the five of you that listen to the show. I really appreciate it. You know who you are. Um, I think uh, those of those of you who are the regulars know that not only am I usually right, I usually like am it's usually even more than I think. I'm usually like, I could have actually gone further. So I'm usually like pretty conservative with my predictions, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But I still like to try to temper temper all that with like, what if I'm wrong? So us, you know, as we're what, it's, it's less than 15 days, however close it is to the election. Um, I've, this is all in my books. It's always been in my books for a long time. All my predictions have been in my books for a long time. It's, nobody's read them. Nobody's read one. One person's read them. Let's be honest, and it's none of you who are listening. You, you know, my predictions are out out there. I, they haven't been. They haven't been a, a secret. I'm not one of those people that makes fifty billion predictions, and I'm like, aha, I got one of them. Uh, I am anyway. You, you get the point. The point is, is I'm I'm not all, almost always right, but conservatively, I could have been even more so. Anyway, so what if I'm wrong? Now that we're oh, the cat's playing with the bag on the floor. Just like in my first book, pat, pat, pat the bag on the floor, making the crinkle noises. Um, I guess that's a good, I guess that's a good omen. <laughs> um, the cities are primed to spill over into massive civil unrest. The thing is, is it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it on the surface. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know just from looking around, but there's little signs um there's there's a couple of things that happen just before protests these very very secret little key indicators one of them is all of their leadership suspiciously starts showing up and checking checking things out and see how many troops they have um they start showing up to events they start checking things out they see how much how much turnout they can get they see if the regulars show back up Basically, they they're they're gauging interest in the resistance of that area. Uh, so that, without a doubt, has been happening for months. So that that cookie is in the oven. Uh, one of the other things that happens is the cops start training up as absolutely much riot cops as they can get. Well, that's happened. Um, you can't really gauge how many store stores have gotten destroyed because that's sorry, my chair's being really creaky. You can't really gauge how many cities have been have had vandalized and burglarized stores because that doesn't really count. Um, I <laughs> I was at a Home Depot and they had like the homeless had like drug out a lot of the carts and stuff and like had built like a small town out of the Home Depot carts. So you can't really that's not really a good indicator. But what is what is a good indicator is the city starts suspiciously clone cl- bleh, 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 bleh. suspiciously starts clearing up all the garbage and um let's see let's make sure we're still yeah that's weird i oh that's right i told my um let's see hopefully it still keeps recording i told my um told my phone to go back to sleep and that's gonna confuse me there we go um the city has started cleaning up all the garbage well, they only do that for two reasons. Oh, sorry, that probably blew my vocals out again. These mics suck. Um, but hey, this is what you get. Um, they only ever clean up the garbage for two reasons. One, it's election time, which it is. And two, they're expecting massive civil unrest. Um, the garbage, just garbage, homeless garbage, especially mattresses um, and dumpsters and clothes, uh, are all like prime fuel for like civil unrest. I won't go into the details. Use your imagination. 
uh, but it's but it's horrible. And the bad guys are incredibly crafty with what they can do with mattresses, clothes, um, and dumpsters. Rolling, rolling, wheelie, wheelie, wheelie dumpsters. So, uh, and shopping carts. So, uh, once the shopping carts go missing, uh, because all of the stores just before civil unrest are supposed to lock up and bring in all the shopping carts, but they usually don't, but they, they should. And the dumpsters should all be getting locked up. But uh, I didn't see a lot of dumpsters. Actually, I didn't see any dumpsters, so... Maybe I just wasn't, maybe I just didn't catch it. So, so I could be wrong and that could just be both sides preparing, but like what, what would, so, so what do I think then is like the next most likely scenario? If there's absolutely no civil unrest on election day, no like massive widespread civil unrest, which would be the most obvious thing that's going to happen. What is it probably going to be instead? So my guess if I'm arguing with myself, is that there will probably be pre-election civil unrest starting right after Halloween, and what what the uh, the ninja the ninjas are going to be doing is they're going to be looking for weaknesses in in the matrix. They're going to be poking poking for holes. Um, so there might be teeny tiny little sporadic like hit and run. <clears throat> hit and run type stuff as they as they pick and probe and figure out which which city has the weakest law enforcement because I don't think conservatives are going except for teeny tiny small towns I don't think the conservatives are are gonna step up and do anything because they don't want to get January sixth into the gulag <clears throat> and they know their own side will leave them hanging right out to dry so I think they're gonna stay home and hunker down and draw the battle lines at the subdivisions and wait it out, which is fine. Um, there's no use to going in and saving the city when the city's almost unilaterally voted for this. So that's fine. Uh, but I, I think what will happen is is they'll find the weakest city, the bad guys will find the weakest city, or two or three, and they're just going to go ham go ham sandwiches. Maybe Maybe stay for three days and then bug out before National Guard can be deployed. Unless they find cities that aren't going to deploy National Guard. And if that's the case, what they do is they systematically go for all of the police precincts. And then they start to try to take out, they start to try to make a chaz. So you might say that's, that's the worst case scenario. No, no, the worst case scenario is the civil unrest is so massive that that happens in every city simultaneously. Uh, which would be a lot closer to this summer um, like the uh, colleges, where at most of the colleges, the kids didn't stand up to protect their colleges and they got taken over. Which, again, to be clear, why would you protect your own college when most of the people at the college support the civil unrest? So I think kids defended colleges that it made sense to, and kids let the colleges go where, where it didn't make sense to try to hang on to them. So uh, I think that makes sense because this is about hearts and minds. Which means if you have support, you go do what you need to do. If you don't have support, you pull back and consolidate. So do I think there's going to be massive conservative civil unrest if K-Bone wins? No. Cackles. Cackles could win and the rhinos are just going to whimper. And go, oh, they stole it. Oh, they stole the election. Voting doesn't matter. Well, it's like... Are you saying voting didn't matter because you didn't vote? I didn't vote because voting doesn't matter. So there's that. There's that bullshit. Um, yeah, there's that. There's that. Um, I think I'm seeing some fencing that I might need to go out and repair. I'll check that out tomorrow. Dang it. Voting. Do anyway, dude, I get I get so pissed when people say voting doesn't matter. I get so pissed. Um, anyway, so. That whole, uh, the whole what if I'm wrong thing, um, I think there's absolutely going to be civil unrest no matter what. But my, my initial instinct and in say it's, it's going to be massive everywhere, but my more conservative, like what if I'm wrong about that is going to be, they're going to do little stuff everywhere and try to find a weak, a weak city. And whichever city is the weak city, God help you all, uh, hope, you know, get, you're going to have to have a bug out plan, uh, if you end up if your city ends up being the short straw because 
they're going to make an example out of some city or two or three. Um, but I think they're going to try to hit all of them a tiny bit. And then, and then probably like if a billion people do show up, then they could pivot off that. Now, I think there's going to be multiple levels to this because I don't think... Remember, the ninjas are just kind of like the useful idiots. The day after the election, if K-Bone wins, I think that's when WW3 is going to pop off. Because I think all of the rest of the world's uh, combative state actors are all positioning to uh, go ham sandwiches if K-Bone wins. Uh, because she is so... There's there's just there's just nobody there. Um, it's not like, you know, Hill Dog and Bill Dog or Obama Dog. Those, those, all, all three of those, they're, they're like part and parcel. Uh, Pelosi, uh, Feinstein, right? They're all, uh, you know, standard left. Maybe Obama Dog was a little bit more socialist, but they were still, you know, Bush Jr., Bush Sr. They were all... Uh, all were a part of the same group. And um, if anyone had effed with America, any one of those people would have, there would have been issues, right? But like, K-Bone, I, I've, this isn't, this isn't me saying this. I have seen a lot of people say this. There's just nobody there. So if we get attacked, I'm not sure that anybody thinks that anything is going to happen. And I had this kind of this discussion with some like-minded individuals they were like oh that would be you know mutually assert mutually assured destruction and it's like i don't think so i think k-bone would just shut down and she would be like well why don't why don't you guys handle it and give it to the generals and the generals are supposed to have plans and and you know blibbity blobbity blue but i don't if they don't if they don't have like a strong leader backing them they might just go well why should we do anything if we're not going to get backing from the commander in chief you know what i mean so i think so i think that's tough um because i just don't think there's anybody there like i don't think there's anybody home i've seen a lot of people say that there there's no there's no substance she doesn't have she doesn't have a group to fall back on does that kind of make sense she doesn't have like a group to fall back on that that back her and so i think w we would just get I think we're just going to get creamed the day after. Um, and that could come from both internal and external. And I think the ninjas running around would would definitely add a lot of confusion to that. They would add a lot of a lot of noise to like the security posture going on. And they might either get skittish and fall back or they might um, capitalize on it and get really, really militant again like they used to um it's hard to say i know they're really skittish about getting militant and trying to hold ground because the more stronger elements have known been known to just come take the land from them that they seize and it gets taken over by warlords and psychos so i don't know like so i think it's going to be like at least two phases and then i think if if those two happen i think you're going to see everything like deteriorate you're going to see society deteriorate in like a matter of days i still think that's on like the extreme end of things because my heart tells me still that like there's going to be pockets that are like okay but remember you're not planning for reality you're planning for what everyone thinks is going to happen and if everybody thinks that there's going to be like a thermonuclear armageddon they're going to buy out all the toilet paper again because they don't know what else to do. They haven't been shown the way. And so while everything is, I mean, who knows, banking and electricity might be down, but like by and large, everything would probably otherwise be okay if everybody had a cool, calm head. But unfortunately, that's not what happens. What happens is everybody loses their damn minds and buys up all the toilet paper because they don't know what to do. And when they realize that they have been lied to this whole time and that there was a coup against them by their own people, I still think conservatives are going to be like, oh, uh-oh. And I still think they're just going to hunker down because uh, that's probably 99% of the time what conservatives do is they just go hunker down and wait it out and see what happens. Uh, I think 
a lot of the left and a lot of the what I call the boomer, the boomer right, uh, are probably just going to collectively lose their minds and buy up all the toilet paper. That's not even a metaphor. I, I legitimately don't know what they're going to do. Buy all the potato chips, all, all the stupid things that you hear that people do in catastrophes, and not even the French toast thing. I, the French toast thing is actually really smart. Bread, uh, milk, eggs, and teepee is actually like a pretty good, well-rounded set of four things to go by besides you know feminine hygiene stuff but you could you know toilet paper like you can just use the tp as a reminder for feminine hygiene stuff like i still think those four things are like pretty good things to go get it's a lot better than potato chips um so <laughs> hot dog buns so, so anyway like my point is they're going to be really irrational really really irrational and they aren't going to know what to do they're going to be looking for people to tell them what to do. But after the three days of, of honeymoon, like the, the panic is going to set in. I think they one. I think if the U.S. gets hit by like w even like one thing, that would be enough to just freak everybody out. Just like 9-11, except this would be 9-11 times a thousand. No, it's just the perception. It's scaring people, you know. And then you start to hear the helicopters go by. And then the helicopters start landing outside your house, and they say, come with us to the bunker. You're the only smart person. Like, I know I'm the only smart person. But get off my lawn, helicopter. Anyway, um, into the choppa. All that seems, like, really extreme. And it's like, that doesn't sound at all like you're wrong. Um, deep, <laughs> deep down inside, I don't want to think that, like, on the 6th or 7th, that, like, World War ww3 could pop off but that was before i knew that they were all the all the uh the other sides were all staging at the borders <laughs> they only do they only do that for one reason uh they only train up and mobilize and get ready all of their troops unless they're ready to actually do something and they never all do it at the same time and they never start just like cross training out of nowhere uh suspiciously you know starting suspiciously 30 days before the uh the election um, so that, that's not even like my, that's not even a prediction. That's just like, uh oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but I think if orange man wins, I think that the civil unrest will still really be really bad. Cause to be clear, I think the lefty Lou ninjas are going to throw a fit anyway. They, they don't like the left or the right. Uh, both sides are pro pro Israel and, uh, the far lefty Lou's can't stand Israel. So they're going to, they're going to be pissy no matter what but uh if if orange man wins i think the ninja civil unrest is going to be way worse <sighs> but all the rest of the countries will cool down um one thing i'll say about that though is that the third option obviously is that there is no election and that they find a way to postpone it or something in which case that might avert the ninjas from doing anything because that worked four years ago they postponed the election results and the ninjas just kind of evaporated. Uh, so even though I don't like that, that did work. Uh, although then the boomers got all pissed off and did a January 6th. Um, stumbled around the White House, or not the White House, stumbled around the Capitol for a while and got in trouble um, with their selfies, selfie sticks. Um, but I think that, try, I think trying to do what they did four years ago again isn't going to work. They probably have some other way up their sleeves for, uh, I would say, delaying the election somehow. And I can't remember, was it Roseanne? I feel like Roseanne was like the first kind of major celebrity person to just come out and say it, like, I don't know, nine months ago. Um, if they find some way of diverting the election results, they can save themselves from the ninja civil unrest, the boomer civil unrest. They'll probably be bad for, you know, a day or so. I say bad in air quotes because they're all too chicken shit to do anything. And they're mostly peaceful by nature anyway. Um, but I think WW3 could still kick off even if they postpone the election. Because I think if, you know, Russia, China, Iran, if they, if they all see the election get postponed again, they all already, they all know exactly what that means. They're not stupid. You could say a few people are, you know, oh, you're, they're, you know you're an election denier. The whole world knew exactly what happened so are you saying like the entire planet is stupid and uh the entire planet is gonna 
see it again, and they're going to do what they're going to do based on that. I think those are like the three potential outcomes. Uh, I hope I'm wrong, and I just I hope nothing happens. But like every single piece is where it is for this to kick off in multiple ways, no matter what happens. The illegals over the border, the unchecked homelessness, which leads to all of the fuel that civil unrest ever needs, uh, the lack of the four, four years of not hiring law enforcement, uh, the fact that the National Guard is extremely ill-trained and ill-equipped. Uh, I, think, I think that this is primed to absolutely happen. Um, however, I guess option four would be if the cabal just calls the whole thing off and says, no, we're just going to let this sit and fester for a few more years. Um, and, but if that happens, I think you're going to see things, whether it's Orange Man or K-Bone, if the cabal decides to call thing out, we'll call it option four. Um, I think what'll happen is things will deteriorate over the course of about two years, just like they did with Orange Man last time, where it'll, it'll seem like things are kind of cruddy for a year as he gets his bearings, and then it'll seem like things are going really good for a year, and then things are just going to fall even harder. So, uh, any, any of those four options, here, here's the thing, like, the things that you need to do to prepare are the same for all four of those, which is work on, work on com, comms plans for everybody that you care about, and prep as responsibly as you can, because there's still time, you still have a little bit of time left, you know, a couple of weeks, the stores aren't getting ransacked. Um, there's still time to, you know, ethically, uh, put some food back before. Okay. Cause remember it's only hoarding. If there aren't any supplies available, then you're being a hoarding jerk. If there's plenty of stuff out and about, you're not hoarding. You're just putting a little bit away. And if it doesn't happen, you just eat it or bring it to a church. So, uh, I'm going to keep this one short. Um, I've got just a screaming headache. Um, whether it's these these solar storms or what, I don't know. But I'm going to go outside and tinker with the fence a little bit. And it's the neighbor's fence. It's not mine. But uh, but you know we're all we're all in this together. And even if they never notice and they never know and they never see, at least we're all at least we're all trying. So uh, y'all take care now. <laughs> um, talk to y'all later. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know down in the chat. Bye.